Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Brooklyn Technical High School Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have y'all participating in this event and have some really fantastic schools here with us today. Each of them is gonna have about six minutes to share a little bit more about their institution, but they will all be around for the entire session to answer questions. My name is Karis and I will be serving as your facilitator for tonight. And so before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping items for y'all. The first one you've probably already noticed, your camera and microphone are off. So the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can, however, use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time and then they will get to those as soon as they can. This is just one of the many, many different sessions happening. So be sure that you have checked out that schedule on the website. And then finally, this presentation is being recorded as well as all of the other ones and they will all be available to you at strivescan.com slash Brooklyn Tech. All right, those are all the announcements I have for y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our first institution and presenter, which is the Cooper Union. Thanks, Karis. It's Hillary from the Cooper Union, everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I'm just going to get my share screen up and we'll go ahead and start. So uh, we get a lot of applicants from Brooklyn Tech. You may have familiarity with us already. And um, if not, I hope you learned something tonight. So the Cooper Union is a very small school in the East Village of New York City. So we've been around since 1859. And when I say small, we have under a thousand students total in our undergraduate population. So kind of think of your own class year at Brooklyn Tech and then shrink it down just a little bit and you get Cooper's entire undergrad experience. We were founded around the idea that education should be accessible to everyone regardless of their race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, um, etc. And we hold true to that belief today. Our history continued with the women's suffragette movement starting um, their initiative on our Great Hall stage and Abraham Lincoln spoke there as well. Our campus is comprised of three buildings. The modern looking one is where you'll find the School of Engineering. That is each of our disciplines on a different floor where campus um, have their, sorry, where faculty have their offices as well. So you can always just pop out of class and go talk to a faculty member. The middle building houses art and architecture. It is the original building um, that was originally the tallest building in the East Village. And the tall skinny one is our residence hall, which is reserved for freshman students. We'll talk about that a little bit more as I go. So when I say small, we have a commitment to teaching where um, our faculty members who are all tenured professors, sorry, not all tenured, but all professors and rather than TAs teaching our classes, they conduct research and they interact very extensively with the undergrads. You'll find a student to faculty ratio of eight students to every faculty member. We have a very strong emphasis on hands-on experiential learning and our largest class size ever would be 30 students. Um, and the biggest thing that differentiates Cooper from other schools most of the time is that we have a real emphasis on social impact across the disciplines. So whether you are focusing on the School of Art, the School of Architecture, or the School of Engineering, you're really going to find that social impact is what defines your experience. In architecture, every student is taking a five-year professional Bachelor of Architecture degree that enables you to practice architecture when you graduate. You study in a studio space that is um, all of the class years together so that you can interact, bounce ideas off of one another and get strong critique ideas as well. Um, it's a studio-based curriculum and there's rigorous debate that goes on throughout the five years. The School of Art takes a different approach than most of your traditional art schools. Rather than focusing and majoring in a particular area, you get an integrated Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. So you'll get a strong foundation in things like drawing, painting, sculpture, video design, photography, graphic design, as well as sound and performance. And every student after their sophomore year receives studio space within the School of Art. So that is your area to really practice and utilize for your entire time of attendance. The Albert Nurkin School of Engineering offers degree programs in five areas. Four of them are ABET accredited majors in chemical, civil, electrical, and mechanical engineering, where you then graduate with a degree that enables you to practice in those areas. 
The fifth is the general engineering degree, which is uh, more of an interdisciplinary approach, but not to be thought of as an undecided major. We offer minors in humanities, math, computer science, bioengineering as well, but they're not required. And you'll have the opportunity to do research as early as your freshman year. Ooh, doesn't want to advance. Um, our labs are as specific as our concrete mixing lab to as general as the ACE lab, which is our art, architecture, construction, and engineering lab. Um, you'll find all of the latest technology there for everything you need. Student life, residence hall, as I mentioned, um, is limited to freshman students. It's sweet style living. And after your freshman year, we will help you to locate housing nearby should you need it. Uh, study abroad is something I always like to highlight. It's a research-based summer program where you can go to Iceland and study microplastics. You can go to Japan and work with an architect. You can go to Guatemala and install solar panels. Um, so very cool experiences that you then bring back to inform your work moving forward. Internships are available and most students do at least two during their time with Cooper and most of those are paid. We have over 80 clubs. You can find things to your liking. And if you can't find something, you can form your own, whether it's Dungeons and Dragons, Cheese Cult, Beer Brewing, Music, um, Sports and Intramurals and the like. Financial aid. Every student who's admitted to Cooper receives a half price tuition scholarship of $22,275 a year. Our tuition cost does not increase year to year, and that is yours um, for your entire time with us. Exceptional candidates are automatically considered for additional merit awards, and we do meet demonstrated need. So application requirements, the Common App, we are SAT and ACT optional for the upcoming year. We do require your high school transcript and letters of recommendation. If you are applying to engineering, please make sure you have taken both calculus and physics. And then we do have supplemental materials that are required as well. And I highly advise you to attend one of our virtual information sessions for the particular school that you wish to apply to, to learn more about that. We have early decision, which is binding, and then regular decision as well. And I'm going to drop my um, contact information in the chat. I hope that you come to visit campus soon. We're open again for uh, visits, and we'd love to show you around. And thanks so much for being here tonight. All right. Up next, we've got SUNY Polytechnic Institute. Good evening, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully, you all can see that. Uh, so my name is Lance Frazier. I work in the admissions office at SUNY Poly. I'm very excited to be here with all of you tonight. Um, I'm going to give a quick presentation and I'll drop a, um, a link to our request for more information if you, if you are interested in SUNY Poly after my presentation. Um, so SUNY Poly is one institution and we have two campuses. We have a campus in Utica, New York and a campus in Albany, New York. The difference between the two campuses is our Albany campus only has our College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering which is where our nanoscale science and nanoscale engineering programs are held. All of our other programs will be held in Utica. Some campus facts. So the US News and World Report groups colleges into regions every year, and SUNY Poly falls under the regional universities North category with about 180 other institutions. We're ranked number two for top public schools out of all the public institutions in our category. We're ranked number four for best colleges for veterans, 12 for best regional universities North out of public and private institutions, we're ranked number 20 for top performers in social mobility. We're a smaller institution, so we have 2,200 undergraduate students and about 800 graduate students to give us a total of 3,000 students at SUNY Poly. Our average class size is 18, so we really do have an intimate academic setting. I graduated in 2016 with my bachelor's in 2018 with my master's from SUNY Poly. I can attest to it. I graduated from a high school of 80 students, so it was nice to, to have more of an academic um, intimate academic setting and really get to know the professors. They teach throughout your, your curriculum. So you're not just going to see them your senior year. You're going to see them throughout. Uh, we also do not have TAs. It's all taught by um, our professors and lecturers at SUNY Poly. Our student to faculty ratio is 13 to 1 and our residential population is over 900 students. We have four residence halls and students um, are offered housing all four years if needed. And we also allow vehicles all four years. On top of housing, we do have a, a wide variety of other student services office, such as the Center for Student Involvement, where they do a wide variety of activities for our students on and off campus. 
around the Utica and, and Albany areas, depending on which campus and which programs you're interested in. You can see here all of our undergraduate programs. So SUNY Poly is made up of five academic colleges, the College of Arts and Sciences, College of Business, College of Health Sciences, College of Engineering, and College of Nanotech Science and Engineering. All their locations are next to the college. All of our engineering programs are ABA accredited by the um, Board of Engineering and Technology. And then we also have some accelerated programs, a uh, computer science program, a four plus one program where students can get their bachelor's and master's in five years. Um, same for our communications and information design program, which is more like graphic arts. Everything's applied learning. So you can use our all of our labs. We have Mills, Lace, Robotics Lab, 3D Printer Lab, um, and a lot of other, other labs on campus for students. So if you're interested in applied learning, we definitely have a wide variety of opportunities for students. And our students do do a full capstone year long project in our engineering programs um, to basically uh, focus more on an area that you're interested in. Um, this is our middle 50% of where students fall every year. So we accept students 25% below and above those ranges. I won't read them off to save time, um, but just to know this is not what you have to have to be admitted into SUNY Poly. This is just the average of our accepted students every year, um, just to give you an idea. So SAT scores, we were test optional for fall 2022. We're not sure what we're going to do yet for fall 2023. Um, but if we do bring back the SAT or ACT scores, um, typically, um, our, our, our scores fall between 1100 and 1290 at our Utica campus and 1290 to 1420 at our Albany campus. Um, students can apply online using the SUNY app or the Common app. They're both $50. Then you'll need to um, have a high school transcript sent over. And then we, as I mentioned, we were optional for 2022. Um, we may be bringing them back for 2023. And then we do require two letters of recommendation, one from a school counselor, one from a teacher. And I do recommend if you're thinking the STEM field, um, have a math or science reference as, as a second um, letter from a teacher. Uh, we have SUNY tuition for New York State residents. The SUNY tuition is $7,070 for this year. Um, our average room and board is $14,622. With fees, you're looking at right around uh, $23,000, $24,000 a year at SUNY Poly before financial aid and scholarships. And we do offer merit scholarships at SUNY Poly. They're solely based on your academics. Um, more than 85% of our students receive some form of financial me, Polly. I know this is quick. I wanted to make sure I got through my time. I will be here until the end, so feel free to ask any questions. And as I said, I'll drop the uh, request more information in the chat. Thanks for being here tonight. All right, we've got Rochester Institute of Technology up next. All right, hello everyone. My name is Michael, representing RIT. Let's get going. So we're one of the largest private universities in the country. We have people from all 50 states, all walks of life, more than 90 different countries. This large size, scale, and scope means that you'll have a ton of different opportunities to interact, collaborate, but also engage with people from literally all over the globe, studying any number of different things. Despite our size, though, I would really want to stress that education here is very small and personal. The student-faculty ratio is 13 to 1. Average class size is 22 students. This is not one of those schools with enormous lecture halls you need a telescope in order to see a professor. They're gonna know your name just as well as you know theirs and you'll be working alongside them in the same labs, facilities and studios. You'll certainly build relationships during your entire time here and come to view them much more as colleagues. Now certainly tech is a big draw. We have computing and engineering, but we have nine colleges that cover everything under the sun. There's art and design, health sciences, physical sciences, liberal arts, national ranked business school. You're not restricted to taking coursework just within your major, so you can certainly explore. And we have 15 engineering programs split between two different colleges, engineering, which is more focused on theory, and engineering technology, which focuses a bit more on application. With more than 90 majors and over 100 minors, outstanding opportunities to collaborate across disciplines through project-based work and many ways for you to pursue your interests or even find new ones and customize your degree. What's more, if you do want to take it a step further, we have accelerated graduate degrees, so you can combine your bachelor's and master's and do it all within five years rather than six if you did it separately. We have a lot of different combinations available. There's a built-in scholarship that goes along with it, and this is a great way for you to do a deeper dive in your own specific discipline or pick up a complementary field. Now, we offer many opportunities for undergraduate research, entrepreneurship, study abroad, but I only have a few minutes and you've been staring at screens for what feels like your whole life at this point. So if you take away nothing else from what I am telling you, think RIT and co-op 
experiential learning. We are looking for students who are passionate about what they're interested in, but who really want to learn by doing, you know, sink their teeth into something and get their hands dirty. Because it's one thing to learn, but it's certainly another completely to just understand through firsthand experience. And hands-on is really going to be the hallmark of an RIT education because we are truly focused on what you're going to do after a graduation. So you've probably heard of internships before, but that could be paid or unpaid, maybe just making coffee, getting copies kind of thing. Co-op is full-time paid professional work that is directly related to your major, and it's built into your academic program. So you have the opportunity to work a full-time paid professional job before you graduate. The idea is, is that when you finish at RIT, not only will you have a diploma, but you're also going to have a resume with up to a full year of actual work experience, a network of professional contacts, some money in your pocket, but even better than all of that, you're going to know what you want to do and also how to do it so that when you do leave, you are just ready to hit the ground running. They're not going to have to train you because you have literally done it all before. 60% of our students have a full-time job offer from one of these co-op employers before they graduate, and 92% of our students are hired or going to grad school within six months of finishing their program. Now, with all that in mind, there's certainly more to college than just academics, and with such a diverse community, we have a very vibrant campus life. There's more than 300 different clubs, hundreds of events annually, we do have Greek life, but it's not a big deal here and it's very community service oriented. Above all, I'd like to say that we are a community. This is not a cutthroat, ultra competitive place. And if you are looking for your family, your home, your people, you will find them here because we do have everyone. And we certainly believe that our diversity is our strength. Everyone has something to contribute and whoever you are, you will certainly find a home here. If you are interested in varsity sports, we are division three for everything, except hockey, that is D1. But even if you're not playing at that level, there are nearly 50 different club recreational and intramural activities that you can participate in. Our esports team is actually larger than all of our varsity teams combined. And believe it or not, performing arts are also a very big deal here. We have about 40 different minors and more than two dozen different theater, dance, and other student performing arts organizations on campus. We even have our performing arts scholarship and are building a new music performance hall. We recently completed our new Global Cybersecurity Institute and the campus is always expanding and growing. So we are also constructing an entire new makerspace that's literally 50 times bigger than our current one. In terms of admissions, you can apply directly to a program or an exploration option. Exploration options allow you to taste, sample, and explore every major within a particular college and then declare your second year. This is a great choice if you know you're interested in engineering but not sure what kind. And while computer science and mechanical engineering are great, those are often the only things that you can do in computing or engineering in high school, where why would you want to limit yourself? We have so much going on. We certainly will look at everything that you do send us, but we will place more emphasis on the classes that are relevant to your desired major. So again, if that's STEM, then your math and science grades much more than your English and social studies. We are completely test optional. So whether or not you submit a test is up to you. And if you are pursuing art or design, then we need to see a portfolio. For financial aid, you're automatically considered for merit-based scholarships, and we just need the FAFSA for need-based aid. Remember, too, that your program will have co-op built into it. That money is yours to keep, does not affect financial aid. Students average about $10,000 per semester on that job. And I know this was a lot, so please reach out with any questions, rit.edu slash experience. It's a great one-stop shop for tours, interviews, programs, majors, videos galore. Anything that you would want to know about, we would love to tell you about. This is a very exciting time, but can also be very overwhelming and it's all in six minutes. So certainly don't be a stranger. Thank you. Okay, we are halfway through. And so as a reminder, if you all have any questions for any of our schools, go ahead, take a second, put those in the Q&A and they will get to them as they can. But up next, we've got Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Thank you so much, Karis. Hi, everyone. My name is Julie Loveless. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I work in the admissions office at WPI, or Worcester Polytechnic Institute. Um, I want to run you through hopefully everything you need to know or can know in six minutes. Um, we're a medium-sized university. We have about 5,000 undergraduate students on our campus and another 2,000 graduate or PhD students. Um, WPI is all STEM all the time, about uh, 50 different majors at the university, all within science, technology, engineering, math, or business. 
you can absolutely come to WPI undecided um, and you can figure out your major from there because we offer a lot of majors that students haven't had a ton of exposure to at the high school level. Um, so we wanna give you the flexibility to explore the major that's right for you. Uh, I highlighted a little bit of the facts and figures on our diversity. We have 40% women on campus, 14% students of color, and 9% international. I also wanted to highlight our VEX and FIRST Robotics Scholarships, if anyone participates in those organizations. Uh, we do offer some pretty generous scholarships through those um, programs. And then WPI, you know, being all STEM all the time, we have really great return on investment with average starting salaries in the $73,000 range. Uh, I also wanted to give you a little overview of Worcester. Uh, Worcester is not necessarily a tourist city the way Boston is, but it's a classic Massachusetts city um, and a great place to visit. Um, there are about 200,000 people in the city of Worcester, so much smaller than New York, but not tiny or rural. Um, there's a ton of great restaurants. The city just finished construction on Polar Park, which is home to the Red Sox minor league affiliate, so you can see a baseball game for $9 in our downtown. Um, and you can also easily access New York City via the bus terminal that's about a mile from campus. Um, in terms of what I think you need to know about WPI, we are very project focused. Um, WPI does projects in almost every class that you'll take at the university. Um, and then you're also going to do these four large scale projects. The Great Problem Seminar is a first year project where you work with a group of students to learn more about one of the world's great problems, and then you try to come up with a solution to one of those problems. So if you are studying about clean water, maybe you're coming up with a new water filtration system. If you're studying about renewable energy, maybe you're gonna redesign a wind turbine blade that can generate more electricity. The Humanities and Arts Project at WPI is something outside of that STEM realm that you're majoring in. Um, and how humanities works at WPI is that every WPI student takes six humanities classes, totally your choice. You wanna take English, great, go for it. You never wanna take English again, that's no problem for us. You can take music, theater, foreign languages, um, history, philosophy, religion, the list goes on. You take five traditional classes and then your sixth class is a capstone project. So maybe you uh, redesign the music that goes along to your favorite video game as your humanities capstone project. It's just a way to kind of get outside of that STEM major. The IQP and the MQP are the big projects at WPI. They're worth three courses of credit and they happen in your junior year and senior year respectively. The IQP is interdisciplinary and the MQP is specific to your major. Um, and my favorite thing about these projects is that you're able to do these projects at project centers all around the world. So all of those red dots that you see on the screen are WPI project centers. You would travel to them with a group of WPI students and faculty, and you would solve a problem that's specific to that community. So if you were in Costa Rica, maybe you'd be working with local fishermen on sustainable fishing solutions. If you were in Hong Kong, maybe you would be working on reducing single-use plastic silverware in all of the market stalls there. Um, if you're in Australia, maybe you're working on wildfire prevention issues. And the great thing about these projects is that WPI gives every student up to $5,000 in global project funding so that there's really very little cost to you. The average cost of going abroad with WPI is $5,000. So the scholarship is going to cover it. And it really allows over 90% of our students to have some sort of off-campus or international experience. We are, uh, of course, a holistic university in terms of our application review. I will say that we are test blind. We do not accept the SAT or the ACT. So I congratulate you if you have done well on those exams, but those exams don't test the things that we care about, which you can see kind of highlighted on this slide here. 
We do like to see students challenging themselves in math and science and getting lots of A's and B's in their high school career to be a competitive applicant for WPI. So with that, I'll wrap things up. Um, it is absolutely possible to come visit WPI. We have tons of virtual opportunities. We have summer programs starting up soon. Um, and we also have in-person on campus visits. So we'd love to see you up on our campus in Worcester. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Up next, we've got University of Massachusetts Amherst. Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn from UMass Amherst. I love this format so much because I love learning from my amazing colleagues. I don't always get to hear as many of um, these great details as, uh, as I do in this. Um, <laughs> sorry, can you see my screen, my PowerPoint? Not yet. Okay, so I, hold on, sorry everyone. Don't worry, I'm still on the clock. I failed to share. How is this still happening, right? <laughs> All right, here we go. That should be up in just a couple seconds. All right, so yes, welcome to UMass Amherst virtually. I'm so happy to be here. Um, in case you have not been to UMass before, we are about three to four hours north of Brooklyn Tech. Um, you can get up here by car or by train or by bus. And depending, you know, how you come up and on at what time of day, you know, may, <laughs> may determine the amount of time it takes to get, to get up here. But it is beautiful up here. And I'd love for you all to come check it out. Um, sort of similar to WPI, Amherst is a college town and it's a really nice college town. And actually, um, you know, rankings are silly, but we say them anyway. So Amherst is consistently voted among the top college towns in the whole country. Um, very cute, lots going on here with um, good music, great food, and just so many students. One of the cool things about UMass and this area um, around Amherst is that we're in the five college consortium and you know you heard from the other colleges that's something that you're going to find at other schools too is us in partnership with other colleges nearby and for us we're right near Amherst College, Smith College, Mount Holyoke College and Hampshire College and we do a lot together you can take their classes they can take ours you can play their club sports teams um, you can do many social events together. So it's like 30,000 undergrads between us five schools in this little area. So that's another thing that makes the college town fun, honestly. Um, and we are you know, a great public university out of state, um, of course, and we'll talk about that in a second, but we're the flagship school of Massachusetts. Um, and let's see, it's funny, I can't even see my screen. We have a ton of academic offerings um, for you to choose from, and I'll break those down in a minute as well. And let's see, tons of research here. We're a research one university, so any major you do here, you're gonna have research opportunities. All of our professors are required to do and publish top level research. We also have about 6,000 grad students um, who you could work with if you want to, and you can do your own projects too. So tons of research starting year one and supports and finding that too. Um, you know, being a big school, 23,000 undergrads, we also have an amazing and large alumni network and that can come in handy you know when you're searching for jobs and just networking all over the place um so around the world we have about 300,000 alumni at this point in time but my favorite fun fact statistic is UMass Amherst is ranked number one in the whole country for food on campus so come on by a dining hall when you come visit check out the food see if you agree uh having been a former Brooklynite myself food is very important to me and I love it up here so hopefully you will too um, all foodies welcome. So academically, um, as with some of my colleagues, you know, we break UMass Amherst, the big university down into uh, 10 smaller colleges. And that's where you'll find all the majors that you may be um, doing here. And you don't need to do just one area. You don't need to do just one major. You can also add on a double major, a minor, et cetera. But these are the areas that you're gonna find everything academic at UMass. Um, we do read applications by major. So the major you put on your application will have something to do with how competitive it might be to get in here. But once you're here, you can add on almost anything. The um, exceptions to that are nursing, that's direct admit, 
and our school of business eisenberg school of management is now also direct admit so if you're really interested in those put those on the app as your first choice and and hope for the best um and all the other ones though again you can work your way into any of these once you're here on campus so financially we're a good deal a good value um even though we're out of state to you and we give all of our merit money to our out of state students like you so know that that will um come off of the bill we try to make it more like the in-state tuition for you um but in a sense the better your grades the the more money you might be offered in that way but then there's of course need-based financial aid um you can fill out the fafsa and get that as well if you qualify um, we have an honors college that um, a lot of our Brooklyn Tech students love to hear about, but um, just know you don't have to apply into it direct, but we have it. Um, we also, I know I said we have research, um, but we also have tons of internships and similar to RIT um, and a few others, we have some great co-ops for you to add on to your studies. Um, study away, you know, everyone loves to hear about can I study abroad? The answer is yes, any major we have. Um, you can also, of course, study away and get credits transferred back here from almost anywhere in the country. And of course, locally, like I said, you can take classes at those schools right by us. Um, and I'm almost out of time, so here's a little contact information, but thanks again so much for being here and for listening. Thanks so much. All right, well then we will, Close out our night with our final institution, which is NYU Tandon School of Engineering. Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be speaking to you this afternoon. Um, my name is Rebecca. I work in the Office of Undergraduate Enrollment at NYU Tandon, the engineering school, and that's what I'll be focusing on this afternoon. So why NYU? So the first thing I wanted to highlight is that our campus is located in the heart of the Brooklyn Tech Triangle, which is about one mile away from Brooklyn Tech, so not too far. Um, this is aside from the Washington Square campus that houses other colleges that NYU hosts. Um, I'll be speaking more pointed towards the Tandon experience, but please direct any other questions you have. I'm open to answering any of them. So I just want to touch on some major highlights of your Tandon experience. Um, so we have three options for study away at Tandon. We have our NYU global sites, which are internal transfer credits. So you won't have to worry about transferring credits. These are NYU institutions abroad. As you can see in the picture, we have two four-year institutions, Abu Dhabi and Shanghai, that uh, give students a four-year bachelor's degree. And you can go spend a semester or a year or a summer there. So those are all options open to our students. Um, if these locations don't appeal to you or you wanna go to a specific program, you can use the Global Pathways or the Global E3 sites, um, which will direct you to any institution um, across the globe. And well, the ones we partnered with specifically are partnered in our Global E3 sites. Um, so these are all opportunities that are open to engineering students because we know a lot of engineering students feel as though it's harder for them to go to abroad and get transfer credits that will be used towards their degree. Another thing I want to highlight was our is our undergraduate summer research program. So this is a 10 week hands on research experience with a faculty member. These go on during the summer. They are paid ex experiences for our students. Um, professors will open up their labs to students based on application. All students are guaranteed um, a spot in this program if they apply and meet the minimum GPA standard. Um, and this could be with a faculty member you've never spoken to before or someone you have a longstanding relationship with. So I just wanted to highlight this as one of the many things we offer here that is unique to the Tandon experience and the NYU community as a whole. We have our bachelor's and master's program and later on I'll show you our list of bachelor's degrees. Um, recently we've added about 10 uh, plus one accelerated programs to our list of bachelors where you will maintain your bachelor's degree and add on your master's degree in one year, which really appeals to students that want to stay connected with their professors and move forward through with the Tandon experience. Then I just want to touch on our cutting edge labs and research centers. These are the centers of research that we are primarily focusing on right now. Um, the picture on the left is our maker space, which is an amazing um, opportunity for students to collaborate together on individual projects, class projects, um, or their VIP projects, which, which I'll discuss in a bit. Um, these, this is just really an open space for everyone. It's free for all students to use. The materials are free and there's hands-on advice and workshops that students can go to at no cost to just either sharpen their skills or completely add on to the skills that they've had before. 
So here I just want to show everyone a list of our undergraduate majors. Um, you'll see at the bottom we have undeclared. So again, this is just for the Tandon School of Engineering. If you're applying to NYU, you will choose your major on the Common App. You can also choose undeclared. Um, and then during your first year, you'll get a first year academic advisor that will walk you through the process of choosing your major. But it's no problem to come in for your first year and not be sure of what you want to put your foot down on and what you want to do for the rest of your three years at the institution, we'll have no problem helping you and get along. Um, everyone's first year looks a bit like this. So your first semester, you'll take a, a writing course. We require two, two semesters of writing just so we can ensure that all engineering students can put forward work that everyone can understand. We wanna ensure that, you know, we're keeping our options open and that engineering students know more than STEM um, and have a well-rounded education. Then you'll probably take calculus one or cal in calculus two during your first year or other mathematics courses and then um, your basic science classes and general engineering sessions that all students at Tandon take so this will look a little bit different for everyone but the same framework stands then i want to touch on our vips so these are real world projects in research design and entrepreneurship that all students can participate in they're going to be used as a club or as a credit, we have 40 projects student, 40 projects currently, 440 students and 25 different majors. So we have students from all over the NYU campus, from the art school, from the School of Public Health coming to engage in these opportunities. And I know that was quick and I don't wanna to spend too much time going into admissions and important dates. So we have this handy QR code on the top right corner for any questions you have on tuition, on scholarships, it is all listed out um, on our webpage that you can find at that QR code. But I'm excited to hear any questions you have. Please let me know. Thank you so much. All right, that concludes all of our six minute presentations. And so I'm going to invite all of our panelists to go ahead, turn their mics on, turn their cameras back on, because we have just a few minutes and I want to get us kicked off with a brief Q&A. So the first question I have, and we will start with the Cooper Union and then go in the order that they presented in tonight is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your college? Ooh, that's a good one and not what I was thinking about. <laughs> um, I think that the one that I would suggest that you remember about Cooper is that we're quirky and irreverent and everything is always changing based on what students bring to campus. And I think that can be true in a lot of places, but when you're in a really small environment where you know one another really, really well, it, it's a little easier to do quickly. Um, and so if you have particular interests and tastes, they are welcome here and we'd love to read about them in your application. It's just a nice way to differentiate yourself. Um, and one quirky fact I'll leave you with is that we have the only round elevator in in the world, as far as I know. Um, that was what Peter Cooper thought elevators would look like. If you wanna come and experience it, it's very slow and cranky, but it will get you up to the ninth floor. Great, that's interesting. I did not know that, so that's, that's a fun fact. <laughs> so um, for SUNY Poly, I think that for us, you know, we really do have that applied learning, experiential learning aspect and, and you really will get to use our labs and, and you know it's it's not all graduates doing research and things it's our undergraduate students and, and if you're interested in research and then really doing some projects maybe some publications even you know SUNY Poly is the place to be so I'm going to turn it over to the next person I know I said co-op was the big one I'll say it again just in a word co-op but also the head it is a big school but again it has that small school feel and that you are not necessarily limited again within your discipline we really want to empower you to go out there explore whatever it is that you are interested in and pursue it in any way that you see fit again research study abroad professional work experiences even just entrepreneurship if you want to start your own business idea there's just so many ways to customize how it is that you're going to pursue your eventual degree and i'm sure actually my colleagues will probably say you can do that there as well there are so many choices and options to be honest so yeah uh, thanks. I like this question. I would say, again, our global project program, like the chance to be able to live in another country for seven weeks and solve a problem for another community. I see the students before they leave and I see them when they come back and it really is a transformative experience. Um, and then I also think we have a quirky element too. Um, and 
uh, our quirkiness, I'm going to say manifests itself in our lettuce club. They meet once a year. They race to eat a head of iceberg lettuce and whoever's the winner is the president next year. So if you can make a club for lettuce, you can make a club for anything. Okay, I need a quirky anecdote for you, Mass. I'm so jealous. I'm laughing so hard over here. I love these. Um, I, I mean, I hate to be, I hate to be redundant, but all I can think of is because, of course, I'm obsessed with food. This is all I think about. I still want you to remember about UMass that we're number one for dining hall food, and I want you to come try it. <laughs> all right, I'll pass it on. Well, since I know most people watching are probably familiar with the area, I'm going to go inside the school to talk about it. So I would say the main thing we have going that's outside of the classroom is the prototyping and hands-on experiences that you can gain in the makerspace through undergraduate summer research, through personal projects and collaborative ex experiences. Um, we've really, really focused on giving students grants ranging from $50 to $5,000 on individual projects um, to start your own and get into the entre entrepreneurial spirit. So if that's something that appeals to you, I think that Tandon really has that uh, different spirit going on right now. All right, we've got just a few minutes. So my final question of the night is, what is one myth you would like to debunk on the college admissions process? That's to me. I think that people don't believe that we actually read your application thoroughly. And at Cooper, we read every single word and we read it multiple times. And by the time you enroll, if you tell us your first name, we say, oh, are you blankety blank? Because we know who you are at that individualistic uh, level. So we read every word. We care deeply about what you have to say. We care deeply if you've thought about it. Um, and we hope that you have and can connect your interests to where you're applying. I don't think this is so much of a myth. I think that it's just something for you to kind of take away that a lot of students say, oh, I'm sorry for asking so many questions. That's our job, right? Like it's okay to ask those questions and you're not bothering us. We want to make sure that we're the right fit for you and that you're going to be successful wherever you go. So feel free to ask us all the questions and, and ask students questions too. Yeah, he stole mine. I was going to say, we're, we're not in some dark tower in Mordor. We're here because we'd like you to join our community. Maybe we are the best college for you. Maybe we are not. As I said, there are so many options. So please, as I said at the end, exciting, but also overwhelming. Take a deep breath. Think about it a lot and ask questions, visit, check us out, check everyone out, and you're not going to make the wrong decision. You'll be fine. Um, I will say that I don't want students to ever anchor on any number that I throw at you. So there is no minimum GPA. There is no minimum test score um, at many institutions. I know there are some that use some cutoff markers, um, but I always want students to like not focus on those things because there's so much more that goes into an application review than just those numbers that stand out. And kind of bouncing off everybody, I think one of the myths or maybe just misconceptions is that, you know, college has become so impossibly hard to get into or that we all have been. And I think, you know, some of us here, we still admit the majority of our applicants, you know, and um, that you are going to find a bunch of really selective colleges that, you know, again, don't, but just remember that, you know, even though, as, as has been said, there isn't just one perfect school for each person, you know, there's just so many options of places where you could be happy and also that really want you there, you know, so um, keep an open mind to, to many of those. Yeah, I'll end out with just saying, kind of emphasizing there's no perfect applicant. We're focused on what you want to bring to the table, not necessarily what you've had in the past. We're focused on the ideas and opportunities that you're interested in. All of these things go into consideration and just keep that in mind when you're writing. There's it's not necessarily one thing that we're looking for, and that's kind of what makes our community so diverse in the first place is seeing what you have written and what you want to contribute. All right, I love all those responses. Well, everyone, looks like that is going to go ahead and conclude um, our time together for tonight. So thank you so much for joining us. When you close this window, you will see a link to a quick five question survey, and we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide about your experience here tonight. 
I would also encourage you to go ahead and check back on that schedule and sign up for more sessions. And then finally, you'll be able to find not only this session's recording, but also all of the others at strivescan.com slash Brooklyn Tech. All right, thank you so much and y'all enjoy the rest of your night. All right, bye-bye.